mathematical practice standard of the Common Core is make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. And if I really had to describe the entire IMP curriculum, it would be with that first standard. You would have to get it kind of like there, so that way you still have space to jump over each one. So like kind of like if you were to move here, well, well you know what I mean, but like... Uh -huh. This makes sense. You kind of have to so now we have to figure out how to get it. It's all about making sense of, well, what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? Make sense of the context. Or is it change in Y or X? I think it's change in X over Y, right? I don't change in Y over change in X. Y, y. You're putting nothing over X but Y, right? Because that's how you get your rate. It's right, Myron. Is it change in Y over change in X or change in X over change in Y? Change in Y over X. It's change in Y over X. Is it Y over X or X over Y? I don't know. You're the math teacher. You do know. I was asking this. And perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. That is the IMP sort of mantra in one sentence, and it happens to be the first mathematical practice standard of the Common Core. So is it this over this, or vice versa? Is, is it y over x? It's y over x. Y over x. Oh, Two so over was one. Right. I told you y over x sounded right. The second Common Core practice standard, reason abstractly and quantitatively, is a huge part of what IMP is because it doesn't often give them the abstract and the quantitative right away. They don't drink the same amount of pounds of coffee like because like every day they drink a different amount. It often gives them a context and the kids have to work it up that ladder of abstraction to a point where now they're reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. You just gotta make it a six because that's a seven. And it's but we're not making the ages. So. I know. Seven through twelve people. No, this is seven people up there, not twelve. So, so just so think about it. You don't know people. A wagon can accommodate about six people. That means for every wagon, they can only fit six people in a wagon. It doesn't make sense for a book to say, you know, find all the points, you know, four units away from point three seven. I mean, to kids, that that makes no sense. It means nothing. There's no value to them. But a similar problem. I know IMP talks about a sprinkler, like where to best place your sprinkler um, that's in a circular motion. And they advocate in the teacher's guide, start with a picture where you have flowers and a sprinkler, and so, well, okay, do we all need to draw this? And take them through that ladder of abstraction, where at the end they, they have points, and they have, you know, they have a regular circle drawn, not a sprinkler path at the end, but it's the kids who, who abstracted it. And that's a huge part of, of what mathematicians do. They get these, these problems from these companies, um, that have no obvious mathematics in there, and they, they're the ones that have to bring the mathematics to, to this context, and we should be expecting our kids to do it, and IMP absolutely does that. The third common core mathematical practice is construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others, and so much of IMP, I mean, I know I said the first one is probably IMP in a nutshell, uh, but this one is so much of what IMP also is with kids presenting, with the audience actively engaging with the participants. All right, I'm gonna get up there and I'm gonna say, how, this is how we got the answer. And I'm gonna construct a viable argument. And the rest of the class is saying, well, I don't understand how you did this, or this doesn't make sense to me. There has to be more males than females, right? So there's um, three males, three females, and like two males, so. And they are literally critiquing the reasoning that this group put forward. I mean, it, is, it happens almost every single day in an IMP classroom. The fourth mathematical practice, model with mathematics, again, a huge part of this curriculum where they're taking problems in a context and they're applying mathematics to it. What is this graph actually talking about in number four? Wagons and oxen. Wagons and oxen. At one wagon, it'll be like around four. A number of, a number of oxen needed. I kind of buy tools. Because it might be two, two axes per wagon. They're taking situations and they're modeling them with the mathematics. They're saying, here's why this real world context can be represented mathematically. Think about it, if you all had three families with 10 people in it, 
Are you guys all going to bring the same amount of beans? No. No. Is that what that data shows? Yep. All right. So you did that the first time, right? You I did didn't. I just realized that this second. Uh, you just made a thing. The fifth common core mathematical practice is use appropriate tools strategically. And, and again, a big part of the IMP curriculum is you give them access to all sorts of different types of tools. Rulers, protractors, calculators, graph paper. But to be honest, when I do these activities, I usually don't pass them out. They know there's calculators up there and, you know, in these bins there's, there's protractors and rulers. And they'll start working and be like, oh, I need a protractor. And then, you know, a kid from their group will go and get protractors for their group. It's just, again, another way for them to problem solve, for them to realize, okay, these are the tools I'm going to need. Let me go get them so that I can use them. If you pass them out to the kids ahead of time, you're taking away that one cognitive step that they have to do. And again, talking about in the future in the real world, um, when they have a job, there's no one saying, you're, you need a ruler or a protractor or a graph paper here. That's, that's an important part to the whole mathematical process and to the whole problem solving process is what tools do I need and how can I use them uh, effectively? The sixth common core um, mathematical practice is attend to precision, which is an important part of this curriculum. Uh, they actually have some activities that I'll say are devoted to this one. Well, what points do we need to get? Like that so point? point? Yeah, so we know this physical right? region right here. Yeah, this is a physical region, so we need like that point, that point, and that point, and that point, this point. So no, no, there right is here. a this big one. push here to have kids carry through these ideas of precision to um, put their answers as precise as possible because there's meaning in that precision. No, but that amount is for the whole dozen. Like this amount, mm -hmm. it's point, yeah, it's, that, oh, it's yeah. that much for the whole dozen. The seventh common core practice is look for and make use of structure. And you see that happen frequently in IMP where they are giving them all sorts of different problems and having kids uh, find the structure the kids, when they see that connection, and that's powerful, and the, the power is in that structure. So we are seeing IMP go back to looking at the structure as we're making connections within math. Like from point B to C, they start using that water, and then from point C, they, they have the same amount again, because they're almost to like Fort Laramie. Which is something that, I think in traditional books, it's very sort of narrow and when we're doing quadratics, we're doing quadratics and, and nothing else. And when we're doing linear functions, we're doing linear functions and, and nothing else. But IMP, sort of, when they, even when they talk about quadratics, we go back and look at the structure of a linear function and how that relates to a quadratic function so that they can make these mathematical connections. The eighth common core practice is look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. And that is something that's certainly in IMP. I will give credit to traditional textbooks that that happens to be one that they also do a good job on. So we can call that one a tie and say IMP wins in the other seven.